Hello everyone, it's Melanie here with Vintage Hill Studio. Today I have a recycle project using this vintage sewing pattern packaging. This was so much fun. This is circa 1977. The front and back of the packaging. Just take a look at those high-waisted pants and the hairstyles. Some of that's back in, folks. So this was a fun little project to just repurpose this packaging. It is roughly six and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches, which is too big for a five by seven inch card. So I brought over my Caterpillar Pro paper trimmer. It's got this neat little light bar that you can switch on and off, and that allows me to see through the pattern. I'm trying to get as close as possible without um, detracting from the overall picture here on the front of this pattern. So my attempt is to try to get as close to a five by seven inch dimension as I can. So I'll keep working at this from the top and bottom, just trying to slice off little bits and pieces here. I just want to maintain as much of that picture as possible. And I also didn't want to slice off their cute shoes. They have some really cute shoes here. So I'll just keep working at this until I get to the five by seven inch dimension that I'm looking for, which leaves me the front and the back of the pattern. And I'm going to use that back part a little later on, so just hang in there with me. Again, the card base is five by seven. This will fit perfectly on the front. And then I'm bringing over this Sizzix little die set. This is Sizzlitz. I think it's fairly old, but I haven't found anything else that has the scissors, the thread, the pen and ink, a little paintbrush, it's just a wonderful little set. So I'll be using this needle and thread part. And then I was deciding which gold to use. I started to use silver, but I didn't think it would show up very well on that packaging. And I pulled a little of that gold out just from the colors that were already on the pattern front. So I will bring over my Sizzix Big Shot. And I will go over here to tab one, which shows me this is for sizzlets. So you have to be careful if you're using this die cutting platform to make sure that you're using the right thing here. All right, I get that run through. This cuts out some very small little pieces. There's my spool for my thread. And the needle is pretty fine, so you have to be careful when you're removing this from your cardstock. Now the needle comes out with this loop-de-loop -loop thread, which is just fine. It's so cute, isn't it? And I'll show you what I'm going to do with these two things, but first I'm trying to figure out where these would go best on the front of my pattern. I think that placement looks pretty good, but you will see best laid plans sometimes go awry. So this, keep fiddling around with this, not sure where I want to put I didn't want to cut up cover up their shoes or their clothing too much. So I kind of went with this positioning. Now, whenever I'm working with some type of thread on my card fronts, I like to work with embroidery thread because it's a little more substantial than just sewing thread. You've got a little more heft to it, so it shows up better as far as I'm concerned. Now, when I am going right to the edges with the tape runner, I like to bring over a silicone mat. That is what it, that circle is. It was found at a big box store. It's actually a microwave mat, but it works perfectly for all adhesives because adhesive will not stick to your mat. Okay, then I'm moving on and I'm just going to trim away this thread that came with the little die cut there because I'm going to use my own thread. So I'm just adding a little drop of glue and I will add my thread to the back of the needle first and I want to let that dry. After it's dry, I'm going to add a little drop of glue on the front. And the reason you wanted to let that dry is so that it doesn't pull away when you keep working with your thread here. And I'm going to let that dry. Then I'll move on. Okay, now I'm getting to the part where I'm going to put this pattern on the front of that five by seven inch card base. And the paper was slightly brittle because it is an old paper. So that's why I'm using the tape runner because I was afraid that liquid adhesive would leave lumps and bumps. And sometimes it actually seeps through thinner paper. So that's why I used this tape runner. 
gone around all the edges, gave some good adhesion across the middle, and here is where I could have said a bad word. Do you see how that just, like a magnet, it sucked up onto the front of my card front, and it actually tore the edge. Ugh, some disappointments, but what do we do as crafters? Just persevere and keep working through it. So I'll get this put down on my card front. It's got really good adhesion, as you can tell, but I also have this little piece that came away. So disappointing, but I'm not going to start over, and obviously I don't have another pattern like this, so I'm not going to waste it. Here's where I had to redirect. I will now cover up that faux pas, that little boo-boo, with the needle. And that will cover up that little tear just fine. Then I'll rearrange where I was originally going to put the spool, and it's going to end up on the right-hand side. No problem. It's going to come out just fine here. All right, I get that glued down very quickly, and then I'm just going with the flow as far as this thread goes, trying to make it look as natural as possible. And I'm only going to use some little drops of glue. You won't be able to see this when it's dry just to adhere the thread here and there following kind of an angle from the left corner down to the right corner so that it gets close to the spool of thread when I'm done. You can see I'm not using very much glue at all. I'm just tacking this lightly down and of course the thread absorbs the glue and the paper absorbs the glue so that's a win-win. All right, and then I'll just get that little spool of thread put down, and I'm trying not to cover up her cute shoes or detract too much from the overall picture here. And I thought this would be a wonderful friendship card. Again, this goes out to all the seamstresses out there, anybody who can sew. You have my admiration because that is not my forte. I cannot sew, or I can say it irritates me to sew. I, you can do anything you want to, but I get so irritated when I try to sew. So I will stay to card making and admire all of my friends that are seamstresses. Okay, now on to the lined envelope. Off camera, I have embossed the flap, which I love to do. Kind of has some swirls there that goes with the shape of our thread on the card. And then here's where I'm using the back side of that pattern. I'm using it to line my envelope. And I'll just take a corner rounder and round off the top corners so it goes better with the envelope flap, which also has rounded corners. And this is so quick, y'all. You can do this. You just need a little bit of space on each side inside your envelope. You can see I'm lining this up the best that I can. Then you simply fold over the flap, which gives you a crease, and you only want to put your tape runner on that folded over piece of your liner. You do not want to put it any further down so that your envelope opens and closes easily. And that's it for my card today. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe you get inspired to try this yourself. Look around for some old pattern packaging. Give it a new life by putting it on a card front. Thank you so much and feel free to leave me a comment and I hope that if you're new to the channel you will become a new subscriber and I hope to see you all again next week. Happy crafting everyone!